Let's talk about the Rift S. If you read about it on several subreddits or if you browse YouTube for Rift S videos, you could believe that this device actually is terrible and worse than the original Rift. But is it really so? I have actually tried the device for more than one hour, so I can really tell you what the Rift S is like and I'm going to do so in this video and it's coming up. Hi and welcome to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang and if this is your first time here, if you're just as excited about VR and AR as me, then subscribe now and click on the bell button so don't miss anything. One week ago at GDC, Oculus has announced the Rift S, the replacement for the original Rift. And this announcement had made huge waves, especially in the VR enthusiast community, in our community, in the subreddits, on YouTube and so on. And most VR enthusiasts were kind of disappointed not to see something like a Rift 2, something with better specs, a headset with a wide field of view, with a huge bump in resolution and so on and so forth. However, all of these people on the interwebs, they actually have not tried the device for themselves. I spent a good amount of time with the Rift S playing Asgard's Wrath and Stormland. And I can tell you that I came away impressed and actually the pain points of the original Rift had been eliminated and I really, really enjoyed my time with the Rift S and I can tell you it was a very clear upgrade for me. Let me tell you why. So for the original Rift, honestly speaking, I don't think it's a very comfortable headset, at least for me, for my, for my head. My problem is that I find it kind of too small here and it, it hurts me after I wear it for, for longer periods of time. Especially if I want to wear my glasses, it is completely impossible and that is without a doubt a problem. With the Rift S, directly from the first moment when I wore it, I could feel, yes, this is a really, really comfortable headset and actually I'm really glad that they used this Halo kind of design. So it is very, very comfortable and they've done a great job on making this as comfortable as possible. So this is one pain point that I had with the original Rift. But more importantly, the bigger problem that I had with the original Rift are the lenses and the display. So for the lenses and the display, unfortunately, as you know, you have the problem of God rays. And the God rays are there in any of the high contrast scenes and the Rift, the original Rift, is the headset which has the biggest problems with God rays. Also, of course, nowadays the resolution, it cannot really compete anymore against other headsets like the Samsung Odyssey or the Vive Pro, and it does have quite a lot of screen door effect. The Rift S solves all these problems. First of all, the lenses are much better than the lenses that I used in the original Rift. Now in high contrast scenes, you don't see any God rays at all. And for me, that is really important and it helps with immersion a lot. Then the display, even though it's an LCD display, still it looks better than the original Rift. First of all, we have a small bump in resolution. Not much, but actually there is a small bump. Now we have 1280 times 1440 pixels per eye. But more importantly, the subpixel structure is different now. In the original Rift, it uses a pentile matrix display, and that means that every single pixel is displayed by only two subpixels. Now, with the Rift S, we have an RGB stripe matrix where every single pixel is represented by three subpixels. So we have more subpixels, overall more pixels, which means there is less screen door effect and that really shows. And it is actually amazing because the graphics cards does not have to render more pixel, but still the picture will look better. And in direct comparison, it simply looks much better, much clearer and together with the lenses you have a great picture in virtual reality, something that you've never seen with the Rift before. Now the pain points 
that have been mentioned about this display over and over are the black levels and the refresh rate. Let's start with the refresh rate. So now it's 80 hertz and before it has been 90 hertz. So honestly speaking, I totally get it why people are upset because years over years we've heard that 90 hertz is the value that has to be reached in order to have the best experience and now suddenly it's 80 so that does hurt of course but in my time with the headset i couldn't feel any difference i couldn't see any difference and it simply felt as smooth as before so at least for me i couldn't feel any kind of difference and i believe that most of you won't feel any difference at all. So for the black values, that without a doubt is a pain point. So yes, the black values are not comparable to other headsets like the Vive or the Samsung Odyssey Pro or even the Oculus Quest, which also uses an OLED display. So yes, black scenes are not as black as those scenes in other headsets. But the display that is being used, actually the same display like in the Oculus Go, doesn't have terrible black values. No, actually the black values for an LCD screen are kind of decent. And when I played the games, I could tell that the blacks are not as black as in other headsets, but in my opinion, it was still very, very acceptable. And again, when looking at the other advantages in the display technology and in the lenses that are being used, the overall picture and the overall experience in the headset was way better than in the original Rift. And let's be honest, the black values in the original Rift were actually not so amazing and everything did look a bit washed out. So even in the original Rift, we didn't have amazing black values. So I can tell you it's overall a huge improvement and again, this is not the successor of the Rift, it's the replacement and it's a great replacement. Now let's talk about the tracking of the Rift S. For the original Rift, it used an outside-in approach where you would have to position base stations in your environment in order to be tracked. For the Rift S, you don't need to do so anymore. With the Rift S, it's using an inside-out approach where five cameras on the actual headset will track its own position and the position of the two controllers. Now that is so much more convenient since you don't have to go through, set, through the setup of the base stations and that has been a pain point for lots of people. And also if you want to use the headset in a different room or if you want to bring the headset, headset over to a friend with your laptop for example or simply connecting it to his or her computer that will work. So this is much more convenient than what we had before and the actual tracking, it works really, really well. In my time with the headset, I didn't have any problem at all and Oculus has truly nailed it with their inside out tracking. So overall, the Rift S is a clear upgrade to the original Rift. And even me as a VR enthusiast, I'm looking forward to that replacement so I'll be able to play first party Oculus titles like Defector, Asgard's Wrath or Stormland in the way that it's supposed to be played with these great controllers and with a much better headset than before. However, I must also tell you that one pain point still remains and that is that it does not have an IPD adjustment. Now, I'm one of these lucky guys that has the average IPD interpopular distance of 64 millimeters. And for those of you who have a much bigger IPD or a much smaller IPD, those outliers, they will not have so much fun with the device because, well, there is no manual IPD adjustment, only software IPD adjustment. So for the software IPD adjustment, we've seen that with the Windows Mixed Reality headsets, that is not really amazing and it is really no replacement for an actual manual IPD adjustment. So for these outliers, for these people who have a very small or very big IPD, 
probably you will indeed need to look for another headset, but there are really amazing alternatives like for example, the Samsung Odyssey Pro. I hope that this account of someone that has actually tried the device is helpful for you. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to Emmer TV yet, do so now. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode.